Hey guys, so it's day two of my San Fran trip and my cousin Trin is kind enough to take me around so we're gonna be sightseeing Golden Gate Bridge, Chinatown, and a whole bunch of other spots. But first, she wanted to show me Phil's Coffee. Phil's Coffee is a San Francisco chain that focuses on customization and special blends. They are like the Dunkin' of the West Coast, but the quality of their beans are like Starbucks. Trent wants to explain the process over here. And uh, not that I want to, but yes, it's really, it's really um, a nice small place that's also franchised in San Francisco, but usually order your coffee at the countertop with the barista, and it's, you know, they it's like a drip coffee, and they hand mix it to your, you know, they customize it to your taste, so they usually ask you, um, how do you like it, you know, sweet, creamy, what kind of milk, ice, um, and they have different kinds of roasts, they have coffee as me but she got like cream sugar I like mine black but it was nice I mean typically like other places that I get it black they're either like too bitter or just like too watery this is like pretty perfect like this like you can taste the, the strength in it so it's not bad I mean I don't think it was yeah it's like about the, around the same price as like Starbucks yeah I think so yeah really good coffee though so on our way to lunch, my cousin shows me the Bay Bridge. It connects San Francisco to Oakland. It was built in 1933 and it was opened in 1936. Trent thinks it's the better looking bridge compared to the Golden Gate Bridge. While heading to Chinatown, Trent pointed out on the left side that little island is Alcatraz and it hells notorious gangsters like Al Capone. George Machine Gun Kelly and a whole bunch of other criminals that would not come. So when we got to Chinatown, we had some time to kill, so we were exploring for a little bit. But let me tell you about the restaurant we're about to go to. The house is an Asian American fusion, and my friend Gon messaged me several times to make sure that I made this a priority. And let's see what this is all about. We recommended the pork chop there. So I am in Chinatown at the house and this is the Hamachi Tuna Poke Bowl. It has yellowfin tuna, avocado, a light soy, and Hamachi is the style of the seaweed and also there's these rice crispy treats looking thing. I'm not really sure what that is. Yeah. So I guess I'll just try some of this first. Uh -uh. Avocado, so yeah, check it out. So it looks like it's pretty fresh. I had a uh, poke back in mass, and it's it's okay. Mm. Wow, um, the tuna is really good. Like um, it's nice, it tastes fresh. It has a nice like soy toast, mm. avocado. It's good. It's nice and fresh. Mm. But definitely different. I think this tastes like rice fishery treats. So what I liked about the Hamachi Poke Bowl was the balance of textures in it from the freshness of the fish, the avocado, and the light soy sauce and also the crunchiness of the Rice crispy Treats looking thing, but uh, it was really good. So the fish is really fresh. It's probably better than most of the poke I have in mass. I don't know if they get it frozen or it's held a few days, but like my cousin said, this is like the freshest you can get. So you said it's less acidic than you want it? Yeah, I think it's. I perfect. feel like it needs a little bit of alice, um, acid to balance out the earthiness of the roasted rice. Oh. Mm -hmm. But like the seaweed's supposed to add uh, like a umami flavor, mm. but I feel like it it needs to be dressed a little bit more. Yeah, acid. but I still like it. It's pretty good. 
probably better than most of the ones that have a mask. Like I have, they, we have uh, Pokeworks, it's not yeah. as fresh as this. But I, it's because I'm used to the Hawaiian pokey, which is heavier. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You've been to Hawaii. Yeah, right? it's heavier. Been. It's heavier on the either the soy or the acids. Yeah. No. It's still very good. No, it's still good. So what is it? The scallops? Yep, seared Hokkaido uh, scallops, and that means they're from Japan. It usually is really sweet and fresh, so it's great to eat it raw. So the it's. The outside is seared, so the inside should be rare, which is what it should go taste the best. But it just all depends on how they make it. So you see how it is yeah, kind of translucent. So that's how the good scallops should be done. This is probably wasabi tobiko, which gives a good a tiny bit of um, a wasabi bitterness. So we'll see what the sauce is too. The vinaigrette. It's like a buttery vinaigrette reduction. Probably some kind of berry. So this is their special. I didn't. Re There's no description for me to read. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. It's a good balance, yeah. I like it a lot. Really buttery. Mm. I like the sprouts because it's not bitter. <coughs> oh, so this is the scallop. Like a transcend. Oop, let me get out. Look at this. I like the combination of everything. It's like lightly roasted. Um, the, the first of the, the wasabi balls. It's really good. It's a light vinaigrette. Yeah, good. This is the well sought after uh, pork chop here. Yeah, this is fried taro. And then the pomegranate reduction, which balances out the acid, balances out the bitterness of um, mustard green. It's a very popular Chinese special, but um, has a slight bitterness to it. So I can see why they paired it together. Yeah, Cooked medium, which is how pork should be done, not well done. Well Actually, done, not, really dry. not well. The pork is safe now to eat medium rare. Um, or medium, you don't do rare, but it should be slightly pink in the middle, which is great. Mm. Also, you get to know ingredients if you start cooking more, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you, you cook. That's I cool. cook, but yeah. I mean, sometimes I get in a cooking. Uh, mm -hmm like spree where I'm like, oh, I'm gonna try all these new greens and then it's like slowed down again. <laughs> but I like, I like it. experimenting with different dishes. I'm no gill, gill like tries Meat, this Yeah, stuff. meats, if you're just grilling and you're late on the season, um, a lot of like jams and um, chimichurris, anything that's acidic, like the sauce, it usually balances really well. Let's cut some mustard green here so we could take smaller bites. Be clean. So this is the pork chop. Look how good that looks. Uh, check, Oop, check it out. Mm. The meat is like perfectly cooked. It's nice and juicy, it's not too dry. I like that char, the reduction is really good. It's not too sweet. Mm. Perfectly cooked veggies. Yeah, there is a bitterness to that. If you were to stir fry it on its own, it's bitter. It's like bitter, not, not like, not full butter. Yeah. 
Oh, this pork is good. So, yep. So my friend Don made it a priority for me to stop by here to get this pork chop, which is absolutely good. Look at this. It's like a nice cut too. So you, yeah, most places they have pork chops, so the back in mass aren't really this high quality. Well, also there's no black kind of pork. Hmm. It's almost like a juicy, like a steak. Mm -hmm. Persimmon puree cake. Oh. Mm. Very moist and juicy. Um, it's like a cream, slight like condensed milk flavor. It's good. It doesn't seem like it's too sweet, which I don't like sweet desserts. Yeah, I don't like sweet too. So is it? It's um, good. Mm -hmm. Flaky. It looks like. Mm, no, just very moist. Oh, very moist. Very light and not over sweet. Like. <laughs> oh, really? They don't like it too sweet. Yeah. I really enjoyed our meal at the house. I'm really glad that my friend Gon recommended it. Uh, also, our next stop that we went to was the first fortune cookie factory in the U.S. ever, and it's located in Chinatown. Our next two locations are two iconic San Francisco locations. It is the Golden Gate Bridge and also the Painted Ladies from the early 90s show Full House. The view from the Golden Gate Bridge was really breathtaking. And also being at the park across the street from the Painted Ladies was really surreal. While waiting for our 7.30 reservations, we went to U Dessert Story to kill some time and get some awesome desserts. Just a heads up, there is quite a bit of a wait there, but it's definitely worth it because the desserts are Instagram worthy. And what we got was the Thai iced tea crave cake that was really fluffy and delicious and also we got the mango binso it was like shaved ice with mangoes on top and like some syrup and other layers underneath it that was also really good After dessert, we went up to Twin Peak Summit to get a good view of the city at night. It was really beautiful. So finally, when it was 7.30, we went to Gio Mon's Japanese restaurant and the main focus is sushi. So we first started off with some sake and Fair warning to everyone, I have the Asian flush, so you're gonna see me turn really red from any little drop of alcohol. So this is fresh ginger and Japanese uh, daikon, grated. So it's like slightly bitter, kind of crisp, and you just mix it with the sauce. I didn't put a lot of ginger because it's too strong for me, but uh, that way when you eat with the fish, you can dip it in here. But it's usually really gelatinous, uh, lots of collagen, so it's very moist. And you can dig in between the bones and get like uh, the little cheeks. It's almost like eating fish cheeks. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she said this is the Machi Kama, the yellow tail collarbone. It smells very good. Uh, let's check this out. So. <laughs> yeah, it's nice and fatty and gelatinous. Very good collarbone. Check it out. Smoky. Smells good too. Get in there. Oh, in between this. In between this. Inside. Oh. Oh, inside. I'll spread it apart. You want to do this? Oh, okay. Ooh, inside. Mmm. 
Wow. Has like really like a nice char to it. Thin is like nice and flaky and gelatinous, like she said. So the thing I like about the Hamachi Kama was the fact that it was so flaky and I continuously kept finding more meat and it had a nice char to it and it was so flaky. I don't even like fish, just the fact that it was so flaky. So omokaze typically translate to I'll leave it up to you. So mostly at like a, every good high-end uh, sushi place, they have omakase where it depends. It depends on what the chef's choice is. And uh, this ten-piece omakase that we got was about fifty bucks. It came with a whole bunch of fish, uh, uni, uh, shrimp. So this 10 piece omakase had a wide range of items and uh, fishes that were gathered all around the world and through different methods. But my favorite was the tuna belly. It was really um, smooth and it had a nice like ratio of fat on it where it just like melts in your mouth better than any kind of tuna I had ever had um also the uni was really good it was nice moist squishy nice and fresh didn't have a fishy taste to it i mean the uni i typically get in boston is really bad like dried out not as fresh and uh the shrimp was really good also how they fried the head So we finished the night off with avocado ice cream so I think this is probably the end of the video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time and subscribe if you want to see day 3 and 4.